So anyways, hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Music with the Minister, and let me just tell you kind of today's song, it was a hard one to find. So as I started going through like all the top songs right now of 2021, I started going through them this week. They are all slow and just like introspective and make you think deep and they're whiny and stuff like that. And I don't know if it's because we're coming out of 2020 and all the COVID stuff. So all the artists were like slow and depressed. So they made like depressing songs. I don't know, but I could not play a slow song today. So I had to like go find something. So I had to go all the way back to 2014. So this is an old song. You're not going to hear this on the radio on the Christian stations because it's like six plus years old now, which means it's ancient. I know. This one is not, I have not heard this one. I, and to be honest with you, I never even heard the song until I came across a YouTube playlist because I was going through other ones. And this one came up and I was like, oh, this one's at least like an upbeat, a little bit more upbeat. I was like, I could use this. And the message of this one's fantastic though. So that's why we're using this one today. So it is a song from uh, Lecrae, who you've heard before, and uh, the song for, uh, for King and Country. So it's kind of King and Country does the chorus, Lecrae does the main lyrics. This is a rap song, generally the main part of it. As I've warned you before, if you do not like rap, I love it. But if you don't like rap, there's a ton of content in it, so it's hard to follow. But that's why we're going to go through music with the minister and kind of unwrap it some. Here's the other thing. I don't have a lyrics video, so it shows you the lyrics when it's going today. Because since it was made back in 2014, the lyrics videos were terrible. And they were so bad, I was like, I can't even show that on a Sunday morning because it makes me look bad. So um, we're not doing those. We're actually using the music video. So let me tell you what's happening in the music video uh, as you get ready to watch it here in a second. Uh, Lecrae is the one guy in it, and there's a, it must be a town in Mexico where the other guy is. And the song is called Messengers. And it's obviously talking about Christians being messengers of God's message to the world. And so the background part of the song is the guy in go some Mexican guy there and he has like a speaker that he's going around and obviously he's going to go uh, share the word of God like in the streets and then it keeps cutting back kind of Lecrae getting ready to go up and do a concert and the imagery is we all have different ways of being messengers for God but we're all called to be messengers all right so with that watch the video and then I'll come back up Calling all the messengers, calling all the messengers, calling all the messengers. Given a car, been forgiven, risen, we live in it, give them our all. Rise up from your past, it's holding you down. This moment is all that matters, the future is now. How will the people know if we don't tell them? If we fail them, they're stumbling in the dark, but the light is what we carry, yeah. Don't have to wonder your purpose or what you here for. Reflect his image and show the world what he cares for. And I know it's all right, 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 you know, and you know, it's your lie, lie, lie. We know, and we know, the time's running now, can't wait around, cause. Seen plenty of hatred, death, and destruction where ignorance kills many. The blind leading the blind, we turn in the blind eye. That alone is a crime. We got the power of life. I know that we make mistakes, don't let them keep you away. Mercy, love, and His grace is the reason we move ahead. Speak out, though we never been qualified to do it. I ain't earned it, I was loved and toured. I'm brand new, yeah. And I know it's all right, right, right. You know, and you know, it's your lie, lie, lie. And we know, and we know, the time's running now. Can't wait around, cause.
para la salvación de todo el que cree. Right, so that is messengers with Lecrae and for king and country. So what I'm going to do, if you haven't been here, oh, well, hello. If you haven't been here for uh, Music with the Minister Sunday, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back through the lyrics of that song, um, and we're going to kind of just break it down and add some scripture to it and kind of give you the message that's communicated. Now, you heard the chorus over and over again, which is the chorus is this, calling all messengers, calling all messengers. So today's message just quickly is, for those of you in here that are followers of Christ, okay? If you're sitting in here this morning and you don't consider yourself a follower of Christ, most of this stuff isn't good for you. It's going to be good for you to hear. But really, this song is directed to us as followers of Jesus Christ of what our role in this world is. And so it starts off and it continually is saying, calling all messengers, calling all messengers. Now, I want to direct you the Romans chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. And here's what it says there. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him uh, to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them unless they have been sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring the good news. All right? So we see there, it talks about the world needs to hear about Jesus and those who share his message are seen as beautiful to them because they're the messengers of that message of Jesus Christ. Now, the other part of the song, the first line, when it goes into the rap, it just says this, the very first line it says, we've been given a call, okay? We as Christians have been given a call. Now, this is something I repeat from time to time, uh, but it's something we need to be clear on as Christians. You were not saved just to be forgiven. You were not saved just so you could go to heaven someday. Um, you were also saved to do the kingdom work and the years that you have on this earth from the moment you are saved and you become a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, so often I think we get this mixed up that we become Christians so we can be forgiven and we can have a hope beyond this world that someday we will live in God's kingdom. And those are both great things. Those are wonderful things. Those are things that Jesus Christ came for, but that was not his whole purpose. His purpose also was from that point that you gave life to Jesus Christ to go, now you work for me. Uh, now I have a purpose for you, and I want to use your life and the rest of the time you have here to glorify me and to build my kingdom. All right? So in 2 Corinthians verses five, uh, uh, chapter 5, verses 18 through 20, it says this. God has given us, and he's talking to Christians, God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Um, if you want to know what your call in life is from God, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, those scriptures right there tells you exactly what your purpose and what your call in this life is. It is very, very clear there that we have a call to take the good news of Jesus Christ to the world around us and share it with them, uh, that they desperately need to hear it. The next part of the song, it says this, we've been forgiven, risen, we live in to give him our all. Second Corinthians simply says it this way, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Um, and what that just simply means is this. When you become a Christian, your old life, the things that used to burden you, the things that you used to define yourself by, those things no longer matter. You now have a new life that you can start and begin to live in service to God and his kingdom. All right, that, that, that we have a direction that we are going to give, uh, have in our life because we are forgiven, we are risen, and we're given everything we have to serving him in the years that we have here. The song continues. It says this, so rise up from the past. It's holding you down. Let me just reread that. Rise up from your past. It's holding you down. This moment is all that matters. The future is now. Now, what I want to focus on here is this is how our past tends to stop us from being the messengers that God calls us to be. Uh, we all struggle with our past actions and behaviors when we hear that we are called by God to live lives that represent him to this world. We hear that call for our lives, 
first thing most of us do is go, I am not worthy. Um, that, that's just not something that I can do. We realize that we are not worthy to be called God's ambassadors. Like the creator of this world, the one who I sinned against, the one who I've lived my own way for years of my life and even currently today, continue to do my own thing, just kind of reject him. That God says I get to be his ambassador. I get to be his spokesman to the world. Our first thing is we sit there and go, I'm not worthy of that. Um, there, there's no way that I should be doing that. Uh, for example, in my own life, I remember the first, I would say it lasted the first 10 to 15 years of being a Christian. Um, I had my best friend, his name was Adam. I won't give you the last name in here, but his name was Adam. From the age of like four and a half to five to 18, I spent pretty much most days of my life with him, running around, the, uh, uh, running around our neighborhood block, going and hanging out as we got older, going places, playing basketball, stuff like that. Hung out with him constantly. Um, I was from a minister's family, so I always had to go to church. So we went to church every Sunday. Um, and in those 13 to 14 years with Adam, I church once or twice at the most with us. Um, the reason he never came, the kid wanted to go almost every week for 13 and a half years. And I told him, don't. For 13 and a half years, I always told him, you don't want to go to church, dude. Don't go to church. You don't want to come with me. And for 13 and a half years, I always made that kid not come to church with us because I was like, I don't believe in this stuff, and I don't want you to have to go to this stuff. And I constantly told him that, and he went maybe twice his entire life, and he really could have used the church, all right? And so for that, the first 10 to 15 years after I became a Christian, uh, those that don't know my story, now I became a Christian, but it was a pretty big flip-flop for me. Like, it was a major change in my life, and I transitioned from one guy to another guy pretty quickly at the age of 20. Um, and so during that first 15 years, I'd seen him, I think, twice since I graduated high school. And the two times I saw him, it was bad news. When I saw him, he was in bad shape. Um, and he had things that I had gotten him started on. He had went way down the road from that stuff, several steps further um, in the drug and alcohol areas and with women and stuff like that. And the last time I saw him, it was, he was in a mess of a situation. I was a sinner going, what have I done? Um, what have I done? And God, how are you using me? And for those 10 or 15 years, it was terrible for him. I remember all the time constantly thinking Adam's, uh, Adam in my mind, having his face in my mind, constantly of what a failure I am, how I screwed him up and how I destroyed his life and going, God, how am I supposed to be used by you? Okay, we see that. Now, if, if you go into the biblical text, what you'll see is almost every person, as you go through the biblical text, has that same pretty much experience, which is they realize the thing that God is calling them to they're not worthy to achieve it. They're not worthy to do what God is calling them to do. And they express it in the words of the Bible. You'll hear them go, God, how am I supposed to be that person? I can't be that person. I don't have the skills to do that. Or you know what I've done in my past. Uh, Paul happened to be one of those guys who had a lot of baggage in his past uh, where he persecuted the church and tried to destroy it. That he eventually had to come to grips with, now God is using him to build the church and take it to all the non-Jews, to the Gentile people. And he had to come to grasp of that. And what he finally does, he writes this in Philippians chapter 3. And here's what he says, and this is how Paul overcomes his past and allowing that to hold him back. And here's what he says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. And what he's talking about achieving it is perfection. I'm still not the person God wants me to be. So he's going, I haven't achieved that, but I focus on this one thing forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race to receive the heavenly prize for which God through G uh, Christ Jesus is calling us. And so Paul says the way I got past it eventually was, I'm not perfect. There's nothing I can do about the stuff in the past, so I've just got to move on beyond it, and I have to just move forward to who God's calling me to be today. And Paul's going, that's how I got past it. And then through that teaching, that I was able to escape some of the guilt and the burdens that I had of Adam in my life was just going, there's nothing I can do, and here's the thing. God can bring someone else into his life, and God can work however he needs to work in Adam's life uh, if that's what his desire is, and that's what Adam's desire is. And so it's not all dependent on me, and I just have to continue to look forward and do the work that God has put before me. And so that's what Paul is saying, and it's what the song says, where it says, rise up from your past, it's holding you down. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of us in here this morning that allow our past to hold us down, that we still go, I'm not worthy. And so we turns up and go, so I don't have to do the work because I'm not worthy. The song goes on, it says this, how will the people know if we don't tell them 
if we fail them. They're stumbling in the dark, but the light is what we carry. Yeah, don't ha- uh, yeah we don't have to wonder uh, what our purpose is or what we're here for. Reflect his image and show the world what he cares for. So this is interesting. He goes, how are people ever going to know who Jesus is if we fail them, which means failing to take the word to them? And then he says, the world around us is a stumbling in the dark, okay? And he says, our purpose, we don't have to wonder what it is. It's to shine the light to them. It's to show them what their purpose is and to reflect God's image um, in us to show him that we care. That is what our role is. I want to take some time, though, to talk about this stumbling in the dark. Um, So he highlights this thing where he says, the people of this world are stumbling in the dark. And I want to just give you some clear examples of what that looks like in our culture today because we see it everywhere. Here's the thing. For the last 10 to 15 years in our culture, we have focused everything on building people's self-esteem and eliminating anything that could possibly offend anyone. We've seen that, right? We've seen a huge switch in the last 10 to 15 years with our kids, education, everything in society that's all about how do we build your self-esteem so we don't even give like winners like winners get trophies now everybody gets trophies remember that like if you were my age and younger you got trophies if you were what the winner right good first place whatever you get trophies. maybe second place got one but the first place one Um, now we just give them to everybody and they call it what is it the participation trophies like you participate yeah reasoning for that was we want all kids to feel good so if we give someone a winner then other kids feel like they're a loser. So we want to eliminate all that and just make sure everybody feels included. We've also gone to a culture, and we're seeing it worse and worse and intensify more and more, which is we have to somehow eliminate everything that offends people. Because if you're offended by anything, it's going to just crush you. Like you just be able to go on with life if you're offended. So we have to get rid of all these offenses. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. With being our template for the last 10 to 15 years solid, Suicide rates today are higher than they've ever been in America. And I got stats here prior to COVID because COVID has warped everything, okay, and intensified more. So all these stats I'm going to give you come before COVID so you don't see it warped that way. But suicide rates are at the highest rate they've ever been in the United States. There's been a 24% increase from 2000 to 2019. 24% increase in suicides in the United States during that time. During that time that we have started to go, we want to make everyone feel good and we want to get rid of anything that offends any of us or makes us feel bad. Depression rates right now in the United States are at the highest ever. If you're in counseling, you know this stuff and you're being overwhelmed, okay? Depression rates are at the highest rates ever in the United States. They have increased from 2000 to 2019 during that 9 to 10 year period by 33% in the United States. Anxiety rates right now are the highest they've ever been in the United States. 21% of Americans say they suffer anxiety on a regular basis right now. So that's a fifth of your population goes, I am under constant anxiety and I suffered on a pretty regular basis. And the regular basis here was at least once every other day that you suffer anxiety. So the greatest increase of all those things, guess what age group? Those that are 26 and under the people we've been teaching that stuff to and trying to make their lives wonderful, they suffer at higher rates than the rest of the general population in all those areas, okay? The reason I tell you that is this. It sure doesn't seem that attempting to eliminate standards, morality, and hardships in our culture is creating better quality of life for many people. Yet we continue to push those same practices forward week after week, day after day, year after year. That stumbling in the dark that he's referencing is that. Um, it all looks good from the surface. It doesn't make sense when you hear it, but the results aren't showing it makes sense, but we continue to go forward with that. Um, but the thing about it is this, as the song references, we have the light. Okay, we have the answers. We have the purpose. Here's one of the things. When you eliminate standards, when you eliminate victory and loss, you also eliminate goals. You also eliminate achieving something where you have to work hard at things and achieve them, which brings some of the greatest satisfaction in your life, all right? So by eliminating that stuff, you also take away just the things that we do in our lives, and we eliminate the children's lives and they never get to experience that, yeah, hard work and perseverance and battling through things sometimes leads to some of the greatest joys because you can overcome them. 
And so I think that's what he's kind of referencing here as stumbling in the dark. He goes on, he says it like this. He says, I've been in a lot of uh, places where the scene ain't pretty. I've seen plenty of hatred, death, and destruction where ignorance kills many. The blind leading the blind, which is where we are in a culture today. The blind leading the blind, returning a blind eye. That alone is a crime. We've got the power of life. Now here's the deal at the part of the song. He's delivering hard truth. He's being very straightforward. He's being very blunt, and he's delivering a hard truth that we don't like to hear a lot of times. Here's the thing. As followers of Christ, we have a call. We have an obligation to attempt to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world around us. Now, the thing is, that will look different for us, and we will have different opportunities as different people. So the way you share the love of Christ is going to be different than how I share the love of Christ. The same way in the video, you have two parallels going on, doing two different things, but doing what they can to share the love of Christ with the gifts that God has given them and the opportunities God has given them. But either way, we have a call and we have an obligation as followers of Jesus Christ in this world to share the good news of Jesus Christ. To turn a blind eye to that or to take that, or to not take that call seriously in our life, he says in the song, is a crime. It's a crime. Um, I've used this example before, but the only way I can think of it is this. If you knew 9-11 was going to happen, and you knew that building was going to have a plane fly into it, and you knew the day before that was going to happen, and you went to the front of that building and let everybody walk in, and you just kind of stood there because you're like, they're going to think I'm crazy, and you didn't try, would we consider that a crime? We would. We'd sit there and go, why didn't you try to keep them from going in there? You knew what was going to happen. Why didn't you do anything? And we'd sit there and go, what was that person thinking? And really, that's what Lecrae is calling us out for in the song, is he's going, you know the results of the blind leading the blind, of those stumbling in the dark. You know where that ends. And for us to sit around and not take that seriously and just go, well, I'm just going to stay quiet and live my life, that's a crime. How can you do that as a follower of Christ? Okay, as I said, hard truth, we don't like to hear, but sometimes we need to hear those hard truths because sometimes we need to be woken up a little bit. And that's what this song does here. Now it goes on, it says this, I know that we make mistakes, don't let them keep you away. Mercy, love, and his grace is a reason we move ahead. Speak out, though we never have been qualified to do it. I ain't earned it, I was loved into it, I'm brand new. Now, what he's saying here is this. Lecrae, when he wrote this song, was a newer Christian at the time. And he's going, hey, the reason I'm a Christian is because I found God's mercy and grace, and that allows me to move forward in my life and stop being held down by all my past. He's going, that allows me to move forward. And then he says, I understand. I'm not qualified to do this. I don't even know the right words to say. I don't even know all the theology and stuff like that. I don't have all the answers. But the thing about it is, I know I didn't earn it. I know I'm not qualified. It doesn't really matter because I'm called to do it. Even if I'm brand new at it, I'm going to go try to do it. Okay? Here's how it's said in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. All right? So in Ephesians here, what Paul basically says is, hey, you understand you didn't earn your salvation. You weren't worthy of getting salvation. You weren't worthy of God sending his son down here to take life and die for you so you could be saved. You're not worthy of that. But the matter of the fact is, it was done for you. That was given to you. And now he says, go be my messengers to the world. And he's going, you didn't earn it. You might not be qualified to do it. It doesn't really matter. You've been called to do it. Just go do it. Do what you can. Then it says this. It says, and I know it's all right, and you know it's your life, and we know that the time is running out. Can't wait around because the time is now. Now here's the other thing we like to do. We don't like to think we're the person standing outside the Twin Towers going, I'm not speaking to people. We like to think of ourselves as this. 
I found out a year ago that the Twin Towers are going to go down, and I'm going to get to telling those people at some point that they don't need to go into the Twin Towers. Um, so I'm going to get to it. So one of the things we do is we always say, I'm going to start doing that tomorrow or some under, other unspecific date in the future. That's when I'm going to get serious about my faith and my call from God, and I'll get to it then. But until that time, I'm just going to kind of sit back and do what I'm doing. But someday I, I am going to get serious about it. All right? Now, for those of you that know me, I am not an end-of-the-world type guy. I'm one of those that sits around all the time going, Jesus is coming back tomorrow, or he's coming back, or he's coming back, yeah, tomorrow. Um, not one of those guys that think we're at the end times. Now, we could be because of this passage. And so I just live my life the same way every day because of this. It says this in Second Peter. It says, but you must not forget this one thing, dear, brother, or dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. So he's letting you know here God works on a different time frame than we do, okay? He's in the eternal. He works differently than we. So we see a thousand years as a long time. God sees it as a day, like it's a thousand years, okay? Um, so he's in the eternal. It says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. All right, so at the very end, he says, hey, God's time scale, blah, blah, blah. He's not being uh, slow. He's being patient. But then at the end, he uses the key word in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief, which is it'll just be upon you. It's there. So this whole thing where we always sit around thinking tomorrow I'm going to get to it or this date and this, that's when I'm going to get serious. We're being foolish when we do this because the thing is none of us know when our end is. Um, those of you sitting here, if you've lost loved one, know what this is like. We don't get to rarely know when our end is. It just happens. And your end is your end. And so this whole thing where we keep, like we have forever to get to it, no, we don't. As a church, we have lost several people over the last 10 years here from very young ages to very old ages. And so we should know better than most people. You don't get to pick that date. You don't know if you have tomorrow. And we need to be serious about that. Now, the song ends with this, just saying it over and over and over again. Calling all messengers, calling all messengers, calling all messengers, calling all messengers. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, very beginning of the church, it says this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. That is our call. We are called to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. We are each uniquely equipped in different ways to do that with different people. My way will look different than your way. Lecrae's way will look different than my way. We will all look that, but we all have to be serious about it. So this morning, I just have you with, this, or leave you with this one simple question, which is this. Are you being the messenger God has called you to be? Are you being the messenger that God has called you to be? As a follower of Jesus Christ, are you taking that call seriously? And are you acting on it? And are you thinking about it? And are you trying to figure out how do I do it as effectively as I can in the time that I have here? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father.